anticipating more. Hello, future. Next year's Corona. Hello, future. I'm gonna be gone for like two days, and I really hope you guys stay because we did a long walk. Alright. What? No, I got Oh, that senior retreat or something? Oh, so you're all gonna skip. Okay. So you guys will be here on Fridays? Yes. Okay. I'm not gonna be on Fridays. I would be here. I would be here. Yeah, you would be here. Okay. You're not special, bud. <laughs> wow. Coming in with a bang. It's like that song, except the opposite. Go out with a bang. Okay. If a curve's derivative is the slope of its tangent line, what might the significance of its integral be? Yeah, I'm reading as best I can. So. so what do you think? Hi, Flossie, though. Go ahead. It's exactly correct. So if the derivative that we've been solving for for the entire first two weeks of this class is the slope of a tangent line of a curve, the integral is the area that's trapped by that curve. How that exactly applies to physics will be discussed later on. First, we've got to learn integrals. Well, this Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, you're going to hate this when you learn it in calculus. Yes. Yes. That will come probably. That will probably come in winter. Integrals. And there's a bigger infinity than infinity, and that's the Yeah. If you're feeling rebellious, feel free to change the last letter from an S to a Z. Integrals. <laughs> Integrals. Derivatives are the male, integrals are the female. Wouldn't an integral be the male? Yeah, I suppose so. Boy, this went off the rails pretty quick, didn't it? Way to go, Kylie. Oh my gosh. All right. So the way that you abbreviate integral is with a little s thing, because remember when we were doing the funky curve and we had to figure out the area trapped by it. So the S comes from back in the day when they would sum up all those tiny little stupid rectangles. And so you're summing up that entire area. So this is like a stretched out S. It kind of does. So if this is what you want to integrate, any guesses on what the answer might be? That's it. You have to take the derivative? Perhaps. Another name, another name for integral is antiderivative. It's the exact opposite. So basically what we have to ask ourselves is, what do I have to take the derivative of to end up with this? Because if I go the other way, that's what an integral is. So when you think of it that way, for an in, for a derivatives, you're 
taking this, bringing it out in front, and subtracting one from the exponent. For an integral, you're doing the opposite. You got to add one to the exponent, and instead of bringing that number down, you bring down the inverse of that number. So in this case, it would be one third x cubed. And you can check your work by saying, what would the derivative of this be? Well, you'd bring the 3 down. This would turn into a 2. 3 over 3 is 1. It would be x squared. So that's a way to check your work on integrals. What do you suppose the integral of this is? X times e to the x plus 1. There we go. Oh my god, it's less! I thought you. It's one. I think I was throwing it. I'm not bad. I thought you were going to flip it. No, I wouldn't flip one of these for that. I appreciate that. Is that my Mr. Birthday? You can't. Uh, yes, it is. Are you saying? Sure. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. That was well done. Hi there. What's up? That's okay. Oh, which one do you need? Which one? Earth, okay. No, it's Watch it anytime I want now, even when it's not my birthday. You got like three musical people in here, so you're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if, if you want to integrate this, uh, you just have to do each of these separately, just like you would take the derivative of each of those separately. So if I want to, like, if you think of it going backwards, if you want to end up with um, four for your uh, like the result of a derivative, you'd have to go backwards and ask yourself, what would you have to derive to end up here? And that would be 4x. So when you're taking the integral of 4, 4x is your answer. Because if you take its derivative, it's just 4. Same goes for any constant. And then we've got 9x squared. And the procedure for dealing with this again is we add 1 to the exponent. That makes it cubed. And then we take the inverse of the exponent and we drop it out in front. So the inverse of 3 is 1 third. So plus 1 third times 9x cubed. And 1 third times 9 is 3 And that's your answer for that one. Oh, wait. So you think the inverse is the one after you add one? Yeah. Yep. You add one to the exponent first, and then you take the inverse. I got to get a better marker. These are. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, did I sh do you guys remember my Christmas ornament from last year? It's very expensive stuff. Okay. 
So these are known as indefinite integrals. So if we want to take this one step further, we've got to actually put numbers into this. So we're going to go ahead and do these same problems, but we're going to use numbers. And when you use numbers, you do the same thing, but you just put the numbers attached to the little ends of the S there. Yep. Oh, I don't want to erase the happy face. I think it, it would have had to go away anyway. Sorry, Katie. So let's, um, like if I wanted to integrate this from 0 to 1, that's how I would label it. This one maybe 1 to 3, and the last one 2 to 7. Uh, off the top of my head, but mostly from my notebook. But I'm sure they just came from the top of my head originally. What did you say, Placido? This is like if you have your graph, da -da 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 -da, and you're integrating from 1 to 3, that means that you're calculating the area between 1 and 3. That just means you're taking it with respect to x, because we always have to know what letter is our variable. It's almost always x for these. Yes. Yeah, it will be. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. It's mostly busy work. It's not too difficult, but it is important, so I want to make sure you're all clear with it. So remind me, what was the answer when we integrate x squared? Yeah, one-third x squared cubed. Now, when you get to this point, the way that you would, uh, the proper notation would be to draw a line that's vertical and put your zero there and your one there. That's just how it's done. And then you would insert these numbers and subtract from each other. So the one would go in first. <clears throat> one third times one cubed minus one third times zero cubed. And then out would pop your answer equals one-third. I'm going to write it as a decimal, though. That's how we roll. Okay, so it's yes. <laughs> so, our second integral is e to the x. This one should be nice and simple. It's equal to e to the x. The way that you would say this then is one third x cubed evaluated from zero to one. That's how that would read when you're reading bedtime stories to your young siblings. So this is evaluated from one to three. So, well, that's good. You say you get a number? Yeah. What number? For this one? Uh, yeah, that's the right number. He is known as Euler's number, I think. Yeah, 2.7 something. Yeah, 17.4. Just my guess is if you type the letter little c into your calculator, that will be the speed of light, too. It could be a large number. And this one is, you know, more busy work than anything, but... Overall, it's not too bad. So again, our answer would be 4x plus, let's see, this would be 3. And inverse comes out in front, so 9 times 1 third is 3. x cubed evaluated from 2 to 7. And this is, when you have problems that have pluses and minuses in them, you really got to make sure that you keep your pluses and minuses straight when you're writing this entire thing out because it can get rather long. So here it would be 4 times 7 plus 3 times 7 cubed. And then what I would do is I would put this in a bracket just so that I know it's separate. 
and then from that summation, I would subtract the other one. So it is helpful to have these brackets in here because if you leave them out, you would just get this number and then you'd be subtracting 8 and you'd be adding whatever that is. So you want to make sure that you keep that straight so that you know you're subtracting this entire number from this entire number. Questions on this? Okay. There are other integral rules that you need to know. And, oh, if you did this, it would get 1,025. Yeah. There are other integral rules you need to be aware of. I am going to blast them on the screen, and you can just write them down. It's important to know these. That's one of the reasons I'm having you write them down, because you're going to be using them a lot. Write them down as you see them, and I'll point out the really important stuff after you have that all done. Yeah, it's pretty long. Can you print it out? Uh, if you can figure out how to do it, sure. No. Yep. One of the reasons it's good to write this stuff down is even if it is kind of busy work, the more you not just the more you don't just see things, the more you actually write it down personally, that makes it easier to um, to kind of start digesting that and to start internalizing it. And with these basic integral things, uh, the sooner that happens, the better. pretty much. This one? That's just the natural log rule. Like, you know, if you take the derivative of natural log x, it's 1 over x. So, well, 
Yeah, that's it's just LN. that's that's LN. Yeah, sorry, it's cursive. Uh, I just, yeah. Yep. As you finish that up, I'll pass out the homework. <laughs> You're <laughs> that tends to happen. <laughs> Where? Oh, here? Yeah. Yeah. So that stands for like a constant, any number. As you're finishing this up, just a couple small things to consider. In the same way that when you take derivatives and there's more than one, it's separated by a plus or a minus. You take integrals separately in the same way that you take derivatives separately. Uh, in, when you have a constant and it's multiplied by a function, uh, you, you can take that constant, usually like 1, 2, 3, 4, any number, and you can chuck it out in front of the integral sign and then just deal with the integral by itself. That's something that can help you on the homework because when it looks that way, it looks a little complicated. Just pull out that constant and deal with the integral separately. This is the definition of how to take integrals where you add one to the exponent and you take that number, put the inverse out in front. It looks more complicated than it really is, but that's just mathematically how you write it. You got your natural log rule here. E is right there, very familiar. And this would be um, dealing with constants along with your natural log function. And of course, all of the fun little trig functions underneath. So a lot of that should be reviewed. If you have any questions, let me know. But that should be everything you need to complete the first integral homework. Yes? No. Uh, when we have these on a test, you, you can have this stuff in front of you. That when we do take this test, it's pretty much, you can have uh, all trig functions and anything that's listed in general form like this. You can't have worked examples, but anything that looks like that is just fine to have uh, for, for the test when it eventually gets here. You could do that, yep. And then, uh, just lastly, on the homework, it's best if you take a look at some of those and try and make them easier to deal with before you start solving. Uh, just by looking at it, you can probably tell which ones uh, would be easier to solve if you just change the way it looked a little bit before you started integrating. So do your best to take care of that before you start in earnest.